Hello everyone, today we're taking a look at the Mobulus 6 HD0 and of course this is uh, from Happy Model because they're one of the few manufacturers that have really taken up HD0 and given us some bind and flies. And to my knowledge, I believe this is the only 65mm bind and fly or traditional tiny whoop form factor. So appropriate for racing if you're into that sort of thing. I should mention that if you're not familiar with HD0, this is a new digital sort of FPV format. So your traditional analog goggles are not compatible. You've got to have the HD0 or Fat Shark VRX attached to your goggles. There will be some HD0 goggles coming along soon. I, th I think I've heard the first prototypes be shipping in a, maybe 30 or 60 days, something like that. So this has got the Whoop Light VTX. And the camera, of course, is the latest micro or nano camera. It's the HD0 Nano Light camera. Now down here on the bottom, we have a new form factor for Happy Model. You can see it's kind of carved out and we have soldered on motor wires. And this flight controller is the Super B F4 Lite. Uh, and this does come in FR Sky as well, Express LRS. You see here, I've got the traditional sort of uh, all-in-one antenna for the Express LRS. Yes, it is Express LRS. The motors are the EX0802 19,000 kV motors. And on those motors are the Gym Fan 1219 or 31 millimeter bi-bladed props. It weighs 23.8 grams. I flew it primarily on these newbie drone Nitro Nectar gold batteries as well as these tattoo batteries that you see here. With the tattoo battery it weighs just a touch over 32 grams. And with the nitro nectar it weighs just under 32 grams. As per usual with this frame, batteries, they don't fit very tight. But if you flare out these little edges of the battery packages, that can help. They also come with a spare canopy, which is taller than our traditional canopies that we've seen for like the Crux 3 because the HD Zero camera is taller than it is wide. You do get an extra set of props, the screwdrivers, there's some extra screws. We've got even some longer length of screws done here and a prop remover, which I never use. But the most critical piece that comes in this kit is this guy right here. This is what we're going to use to be able to update the firmware on the VTX. In my case, I didn't need to because my VRX was already running the same version this one was running. But you would traditionally plug it in right here, and then you would take the cable that comes with your VRX, plug that in here, attach that to your VRX in order to be able to do the updating. Uh, you can find full instructions on HD Zero's website as well as a number of tutorials online. But make sure you don't lose this piece because this seems highly critical and I have yet to find one on sale by itself. But maybe one day. And the Mobulus 6 HD Zero does come with two stickers. All right, first flight, we're going to follow my typical format when it comes to whoops. We're going to fly in the house first because in the house is my preference. I fly in the house almost every day. Sometimes it's not up on this main floor or upstairs. Many times it's just kind of a couple of packs before I go to bed, just kind of cruising around the basement, kind of getting that uh, that freedom back, that de-stressor before I head off to sleep. Uh, you'll note that the DVR is widescreen, but the camera is set to 4.3 in my goggles. So that's just kind of uh, one of those things. I think the new VRX has corrected that. Correct me if I'm wrong. I, I, I try to stay up to date with everything, but everything moves so dang fast, I kind of get lost in the mix sometimes unless I got my hands on one. Uh, so you're looking at this in widescreen, but when I was flying it in my goggles, my Skyzone uh, 04Xs, uh, I'm looking at it in the 4.3. I have a full review of the Whoop Light VTX and the Nano camera down in the video description down below is where you can find that. So if you want more details about the camera or the Whoop Light VTX, that would be the place to go. I don't want to bog down this video with that information. But yeah, my, my son was home. Uh, I think he had just gotten home from work, maybe out of the shower, so I buzzed him a couple times, but not too many times before he started to get annoyed with me. You saw him give him the stink eye there on that last pass, right? <laughs> but uh, two flight styles in this video as we get here to about half a pack. Yeah, we're getting close to half a pack. I will slow down and we'll do the close proximity. So we did my typical stuff where I like to just kind of go fast pod racing or speeder racing sort of round and then we're going to slow down and go around the uh, close proximity of the table and and this was something like if you have a really small space this is enjoyable this is something that i had actually kind of missed out on for a while and i don't recall what started me down this path but i've recently started to do more close proximity high precision sort of flying uh, and this sort of stuff can help increase your skills when it comes to outside as well. So even if you have a small space, uh, whoops are always, in my opinion, appropriate uh, for the smallest of small spaces. That's one of the, the great things about their f small form factor is shrink down the quad, the space it requires to fly in, 
is also shrunk down. You can still go out to bigger spaces, but it's going to make small spaces seem bigger. Versus, say, you know, a 75 millimeter or whatnot. Uh, I do think that they went with by blades on this primarily to hit the flight time goal. I'm noticing more and more quads are basing their battery recommendation as well as seemingly choosing some components based upon a three minute flight time. That's me speculating about, you know, their thoughts. I don't I haven't tapped into their thoughts, but um, I think that's probably where we're at because in my case, I would probably go tri blades on this. Okay, we're gonna bring it into land here as we go back to the home screen. We are going to see our battery voltage came in right about exactly where you want it unless you want storage voltage. So that's why I chose this flight. Two minutes, 55 seconds, mixed bag flying and our battery at 351. Now, as we take off, notice something. I wanna draw your attention to it. Look at the view as it's going to jiggle. See that? See how it's kind of jiggling? Now watch later in the video it either stabilizes, goes away, or becomes less me much less dramatic. But that that was something time and time again. I would take off from that table, and maybe it's maybe there's something about that glass table. I would take off from that table, and I would see that jumping around. I'm like, oh, I've got messed up props, and then I would fly a little bit, and it would kind of go away. No, it's, see, it's still doing it. I do have some wind, um, but it's well protected here in the backyard, so there's not that much wind hitting the quad. You will see a part of this flight where I, again, I do some close proximity around the swing set, and I do get blown off course. But quite honestly, you know, at, at what, 32 grams, it doesn't take a whole lot of wind to blow you off course. So if you plan to fly outside, that's going to be more challenging. Uh, not just with this particular one, but, you know, all whoops that are less than, say, 85 millimeters. 75 millimeter can do pretty good in some wind. Uh, the Mobula 7 ELRS, the 1S version, that one did pretty nicely in a little bit of wind, I thought. Uh, but 85 millimeter would be safer, you know. More prop, more authority, so it's gonna be able to battle the wind a little bit more. I also do some dive testing with this one, which I'll show in a picture in picture back at the desk. But we'll get to that as we get on. And I'll try to include some of my crashes. And crashes are so tedious. <laughs> you have to scrub through an entire video because since you know turtle mode came along, it used to be you just went to the end of the DVR file because if you crashed out, then you stopped your recording and you went and got the quad and then you got a fresh battery and you started over again, right? Well, since turtle mode, you just flip it over and you go on about your, your flight, so you gotta scrub through the entire video. So crash reels, they're a bit tedious. And I've got a few things about the beta flight setup that I want to kind of alert us to as well, because I think out of the box, the battery voltage is set far too low. Again, I think they're trying to drive towards that three minute flight time, but I think it's too low because you're gonna end up with the camera powering down because you get too far below three volts. Uh, pretty dang quickly, you know these little 1s batteries, especially um, if you're you're flying very aggressively. Once they get down to like 3.1 volts, they go from 3.1 volts to 2.9 and lower, pretty dead gum quick. And so you need to bring it in. I made a number of uh, battery adjustments as far as the the warning goes, and I also left in that muted dive. That yeah. As far as being highly capable for freestyle or big moves, no. It's a, it's a 65 millimeter digital whoop. It's, it's gonna struggle when it comes to doing big freestyle maneuvers. This is going to be primarily uh, for some of the flight stuff that you see in this uh, video. Um, doing big moves, yeah, some people are gonna be able to pull it off. People way more skilled than myself, but uh, so you can see I didn't even make it back home. I had to land right away and my voltage is still danger low. And look at it dropping, 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 dropping. And eventually the camera will power off as we get too low. I saw 2.76. We can still see 2.79 on the screen though. Up here in the top left, I'll go ahead and play my dive testing. Uh, the long and the short of that is if you miss out, at the end of the battery, I found that it would tend to want to do the yaw washout where it would, you would be coming in for a dive and then it would pitch up and it'd start to wiggle around one way or another a little bit uncontrollably. So uh, when you're watching that over there, you'll see a number of dives that look just fine. But then if you watch towards the end as the battery voltage starts to get low, yeah, and when you're doing those dives, it's pretty much a full throttle recovery, and you've got to time your recovery along with your, the height from the ground. You saw on my flight how I let it get too low, and I think I got up to 88 or 89 on the throttle, not 100%, but I bounced off the ground. And, and you know, 88, 89, that's pretty high still, so I don't think if I'd have gone to 100, I would have been able to maybe just skim the grass uh, uh, in my 
main outdoor flight video. So I appreciate the fact that they included a secondary canopy because that's going to be pretty important because again, this camera, the height is specific. You know, I built a couple of these and you know, mine would come danger close down here onto the board so that where you had a top impact, you know, that camera could be driven down into your VTX, which you don't want. So some things to watch out for uh, as so far as all VTXs go, uh, make sure your antenna stays connected. Our antenna comes off, that's bad. I would prefer to see a little bit of uh, black adhesive or you know, any sort of adhesive that would help this stay on. I didn't have any troubles. I left it just like it is. I think if it's mounted like that and in most traditional crashes, it's not going to come loose. But there's always a possibility. And then if you don't notice it and you just go, oh, my video reception's terrible now. Well, <laughs> it's this and you may have just burned the board because these boards do get hot. All micro VTXs get hot, uh, but it can damage these. And uh, digital VTXs are more expensive, so you have to be careful. Uh, of course, if you don't have good connections on both the board for the MIPI cable as well as on the camera, then you need to firm that up. Uh, these can come off in crashes as well. And all the crashes that I had, though it's, I'll play some crashes after that dive reel is over, I did not have either one of those come loose. But all crashes are different. You know, you can have a terrible crash and you think you just broke the world and your quad just flies away. And then you have what thinks a minor crash and your quad doesn't power up anymore. So, yeah. Maybe my crashes are just extra special. Uh, so again, I want to reaffirm that you have motors that are soldered to this different board down here. And for some people, that's going to be a deal breaker because you're going to want the ability to replace your components without soldering. That's just not the case with this one. It's hard to get this small, this light with digital and still be able to viably run 1S. So that's just something that we have to live with. I am a little surprised they didn't go for their smaller motor, their, their 0702, because I think that might've saved us one more gram. But at any rate, so something else to mention here is, uh, so I ran these stick batteries and I found, and I'm not saying that you'll find the same, because you never know, that this battery lead length was just enough. So I trimmed off some of the heat sink so I could make it more pliable here. And I, with my battery all the way forward, I could just plug it in comfortably. So, hopefully all the leads are the same length and they're all routed the same as far as on the soldering uh, for the board. And you'll be able to do the same. Otherwise, you're looking at running a battery with a lead connected to it. And then, well, how I run those is I run the battery in this way and then the lead comes around. Um, so... Anyways, uh, also, I, in some of my flights, I noticed this little antenna. I didn't, I didn't recognize what I was looking at when I was in the goggles, but after I took the goggles off, like after that flight or something like that, I was like, oh, that's what that black little thing was. So this can get into your view. You can, of course, reroute it. It's not like glued there or anything. You can reroute it wherever you want. Uh, if you're running Express LRS, it's not likely to impact your range terribly if you just leave it, you know, somewhere between the battery tray and the main all-in-one board. But it is going to reduce your range depending upon how you orient the, the antenna. So don't go a long ways away. Something else that I noticed was uh, plugging in a USB cable for me in order to be able to not wang into the battery tray all the time. I had to use one of these long nose USB cables uh, because it just gets past. I don't know how I can show that. Maybe this way is the best way to show it. It just gets past that. Whereas my shorter nose would then, I'd have to kind of push things out of the way and I'd be applying pressure. Um, I'll put this down in the video description, but just if you, uh, I think I bought these from Amazon. I believe I got the first one from Geelang. I don't know if they're still making quads or not, but uh, Geelang uh, had quads and they just standard sent these long nose usb cables and then i went and bought one or two from amazon so i think if you search long nose usb cable this will turn up in the first page or two or three not required but it can be handy okay so let's look at the some of the changes that i made nothing really fundamental but you can see here i changed the battery voltage the cell minimum cell and the warning cell voltage to what you see uh, you didn't see me flying with these because actually came later on after that flight where I started making more battery changes. Uh, inside flying, I did not find the battery to be... Well, I could, I could sneak a peek every now and again, and I got a pretty good feel for my timing. But outside, I really didn't get a feel for my timing because, you know, you can do bigger maneuvers. You can be on the throttle longer, and your battery just... It, it doesn't last as long. So... 
outside has a big variable, but inside I found that I just flew it and then I tried to land it at about what I thought was appropriate. Outside is where I got into trouble a lot, where my camera, I would be flying below three volts and the camera would just power off. BTX would stay going, but the camera would power off. So this is what I found for me outside these voltages work and now you might be looking at the 4.4 and saying why is that the max well when you're high volt charging your single cell batteries which i do high volt charge my single cell batteries sometimes beta flight will detect it if it's set at say 4.25 or 4.3 it will detect it as a 2s battery because it goes over that voltage um, or you'll get uh, a low bolt low voltage warning on screen even though it's actually over voltage so that's why that's there also, I get asked in most videos that these are my rates and they are the rates I've been using for years. I am still using beta flight rates on uh, pitch and roll are the same. And then yaw is a touch different. You can see there I'm going 1300 degrees at the extent of the yaw as well as 960 on the pitch and roll. I took a screenshot here of the motors tab and you can see we've got the bi-directional D shot on. So we've got RPM filtering that we're using. Uh, obviously no battery plugged in so you don't see um, any sort of real movement there. And this is the PID tune on mine. One of the keys that I can tell you about is if you want to go from angle or horizon flying indoor, you stabilization we oftentimes call it, and I think it still says STAB in the OSD for angle mode. But if you want to transition to acro, whether for fun or for a challenge or because you want to become one of the fastest whoop pilots out there because they all seem to be going acro now, my best hint I can give you is if you use angle or horizon mode to transition to acro because it can be something that's difficult um, and people struggle with that is to decrease the strength of angle and horizon mode. Say take it down 10 or 12 points and fly 10 or 15 packs or 20 packs or 30 packs, whatever you're, you start to feel comfortable and then drop it down another 10 or 15 and then fly 20, 30, 40 packs, and drop it down another 10 or 15. And by that point, you should be almost down to zero anyways, and you can just flip over to acro and give acro a try. So that's that's a good tip for transitioning your indoor flying uh, from angular horizon mode, stability mode, into acro or rate mode, depending upon what terms you want to use. I mentioned it a few times in this video, but I, I still think they're going for that three minute flight time. And for me, this felt a little underpowered and it didn't quite give me what I was looking for in a whoop indoor flying. Now, I don't tend to fly my whoops casually outside. I fly them outside to show them on the video. So when I talk about most whoops, I'm thinking of them indoor. Although when I have conversations, I try to consider outdoor. So for me, what I would do is either one of two things. I think the first thing I would do is put tri-blades on it. I'd probably go out and I'd probably have some uh, Newbie Drone Z tri-blades. Newbie Drone's got the Z tri-blades, uh, whether they're the 31 millimeter or the 40 millimeter, they're nice, smooth, and light props. They do tend to break at the hub if you're flying the 1.5 millimeter shafts. Um, so that's something to consider there. So I would probably, and that's probably what I'll do next, is put tri-blades on it, see if it comes alive. 19,000 kV is fine. Maybe we need 22,000 or 23,000 kV. Maybe the tri-blades will be able to bridge that gap. Uh, again, this is for me. The other thing that I would probably try is something that I do with all, most 65 millimeter whoops, is to put them in a 75 millimeter frame and put 40 millimeter props on them. We know 0802 motors can handle 40 millimeter 40 millimeter props just fine. So there's no reason to stop us from making this HD01S a 75 millimeter format. And maybe that's why they just made the 65 millimeter one, because they know knuckleheads like me will be out here talking about how we need to put this in a 75 millimeter format. I think if you want to fly outside and you're not locked into 1S, and you're interested or you have HD0, I, I would go back and look at the Mobula 7 HD0. Uh, this is 2S, of course, um, much more capable outside. So if you're looking to do freestyle maneuvers and not just snap, you know, flips and rolls outside or, or inside, really, this is going to be more capable because it's, it's running 2S and it's got bigger motors on it. So th that makes sense. But for right now, if you're doing 1S uh, HD0, this looks like the one to have. And of course, if you're like me and you want to have a little bit more 
prop authority. Of course, we can run a larger battery in the 75 millimeter frame because it can put a 450 in there well as well. So that gives a little bit of an advantage. But if you're like me and you want a little bit more pop, a little bit more speed, maybe just slap this into a 75 millimeter format frame that you've got around, throw some 40 millimeter props, and then probably have to work on the PID tune as well. But I'm going to, well, at least I'll think about Featuring that in a video coming up, whether it be just tri-blades or 75 millimeter, you tell me which one would you watch first. Say I've got both ready to go for the HD0 uh, Mobula 6 here. Would you rather see the 75 millimeter HD0 1S or would you rather just start with stepping into the tri-blades? Tell me down in the comment section below so I know where to go. I'll probably start with tri-blades because that's easy and then go to the 75 millimeter format. But if you can really sway me, I maybe I'll just jump right to the 75 millimeter format. If you're interested in the Mobilis 6 HD0, the world's only bind and fly 65 millimeter digital tiny whoop. I'll have links to where it's available down in the video description. If you have any comments, questions, suggestions, or otherwise, let me know what you wanna see next on this. Let me know down there in the comment section below. I appreciate your time. Thanks for watching.